Today, I'm going to make my first ever British golden ale. It's a style I don't know much about, and I'm not even sure that I will like it. But I'm eager to find out, and that all starts now. Welcome to Big Monster Brewing, the style study edition. I am Matt, and today I am making my first ever British gold nail. But before we get to that, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Like, share the video, and leave any comments, questions, or anything else down below. This is something I've not done for about a year now, and that is make a one-gallon test batch of a style of beer that I really don't know anything about. There's a good chance that I probably had a British gold nail or a style that was made to be a British gold nail, but I don't have any specific memory of it. I don't have any real memory of specifically seeking one out since learning the style. So I don't have anything kind of in mind of what it should taste like compared to something I've had. It's one of those beers that I've looked at the BJCP style guidelines, and it seems like something that I'd really enjoy, and I want to get to know the style. And I also, as almost in every brew I do, I want to learn something one way or another. In this case, hopefully, well, what works or maybe what doesn't work in a style, we'll have to see in the end. And in the end, kind of keep up on the entire BJCP judging process by looking at the style guidelines compared to what I made and being able to tell what is what works and what doesn't in the beer. I'm going to use my original one gallon setup that I kind of put together a couple of years ago. I call it a bag in a ton, a little different than brewing a bag because I don't use just one vessel for everything. I don't put the bag in the boil kettle and you'll see that as we go through the video and I'm going to time it and kind of keep some mental notes of how the process is compared to the one gallon test batch I did on the Anvil Foundry and ultimately see which one is going to work best for these purposes. So with that in mind, I start this whole process off by starting my timer. To start the actual brew off, I start by getting two and a half gallons of water to 158 degrees. Once that water starts getting towards the hot side, I add my salt additions and stir them in to get them nicely dissolved. While I wait, I get the grist ready. And for this style, we are looking to make a very light, pale colored beer that is I want to say balanced, but it seems to be more towards the hoppy side. It's not as hoppy as an IPA or a pale ale, but it's just before that. We want some malt character, but hops seems like the thing that should be shining from what I'm reading in this description. So to achieve that, I split the base malt, starting with 50% pale malt. Then I add the biscuity British type profiles with 38% Maris Otter malt. Then that last 12% of this grist is going to be white wheat to give it a bit of body and keep the beer on the lighter pale color spectrum. For these one gallon batches, I double mill the grains and I do exactly what that sounds like it is. I run the grains through my mill once and then I take out those milled grains and then I run them through the mill a second time, never adjusting the roller or gaps. Just I leave it the same for both run throughs. I do that second mill directly into the mash bag while it's in the mash tun cooler so it's ready to mash. I want to mash at 152 degrees, but I heat up the water to 158, having calculated that the room temperature grains are going to drop that temperature to that mash, that 152 target that I want. When I add the water, I start by pouring about a half a gallon along the insides of the mash tun cooler to raise the surface temperature. Then I add the remaining water directly in. I stir the mash really well and then check the temperature. In this case, it's 153 degrees, just one degree higher than I like, which is one of the challenges of using this system as opposed to using the an anvil. I tend to miss that target temperature by one or two degrees either direction. But in this case, it's one degree difference, so certainly not the end of the world. So I tie off the bag, seal off the mash tun cooler, and then I come back about every 15 minutes to give the grist a good stir. While I wait during the conversion rest, I get my boil additions ready. And for this beer, I'm using one single hop for every addition throughout the process, and that is British First Gold Hops. I start with 0.32 ounces of First Gold that I'm gonna add at 30 minutes. Then my last boil addition is going to be 0.2 ounces of first gold hops at flame out. I also add my usual boil additions for this batch as well, which is yeast nutrients at 10 minutes and roll flock at two minutes. 
To help keep the trub under control in these really small batches, I sometimes use muslin sacks for my hop additions to keep that vegetal matter under control, and that is exactly what I'm doing with this brew. Like I mentioned before, I stir in the mash about every 15 minutes. Then after about a 50 minute mash rest, I remove the bag and let it drain through a colander into the mash tun cooler. Then I do something that I don't do with the Anvil Foundry, and that's a Vorloff. That's where I take some of the wort and run it back through the grains again to filter out some of the larger particles. I don't have to do this with the Anvil Foundry because I run that recirculation during the entire mash, and that is doing basically the same process throughout the entire mash rest rather than doing it post-mash. Once I'm ready to drain the sweet wort into the boil kettle, I attach a length of silicone hose to the mash tun cooler and let the sweet wort drain right into the kettle. I get the kettle onto the burner and I take a pre-boil gravity reading and my target was 1.030, but it measures out at 1.029, so just a touch short for this one. I boil most of these batches on my electric stove and while that idea might make a lot of people cringe, this is barely two gallons of liquid and getting it to a boil does not take long. It's probably actually faster getting to a boil than doing a five gallon batch on propane. I let the boil get to a good strong rolling boil and I start my timer and wait for that first hop charge at 30 minutes. My next addition is at the 10 minute countdown mark with the yeast nutrients, then two minutes with whirl flock, and then that final hop addition at flame out when I turn that stove burner off. I put the boil kettle into an ice bath in my sink and I chill it down as close as I can to 90 degrees and then I transfer the wort to a one gallon per monster carboy and I put it in the fridge to drop it to the 68 degree pitching temperature that I'm aiming for. After that, I clean everything up and I stop the timer and this entire process is almost one entire hour shorter than doing a one gallon batch on the Anvil Foundry. Now I did say in that video that I had some ideas to kind of tighten up and speed up that process with a few additions and and uh, other ways of doing things so i'm not quite sure this contest is over yet once the pitching temperature of 64 degrees is reached i pitch the small vitality starter of y yeast 1098 british ale yeast that i had prepared a couple nights before I ferment strong, I let the fermentation go very strong for four days. Then on that fifth day, I add 0.15 ounce of British First Gold hops as a dry hop, let it ferment for another four days. Then I keg it to one of my one gallon test kegs, carbonate it with the Blickman Quick Carb. And now I'm at the point that I'm very eagerly ready to taste it and see what we got. We're at the time of tasting, and I already know a <laughs> big problem I have with this beer right off the bat. In fact, you might, if, if you're a brewer yourself and experienced with the style and the malts used in this, you probably saw where things kind of went sideways, and maybe we're screaming at your computer watching this. So I'll get to that. I, I still want to give this a, fair, uh, a really fair shake. So here's the beer. Here's the pour. You just saw me pour it, and... We'll get into the appearance. That's primarily the problem so far, because I haven't done anything else with this beer. And I also have, I printed out the page from the BJCP guidelines of what this beer should be like. And let's get right to appearance. So straw to golden color. Okay. Straw, not bad. Here's where things fall apart. <laughs> the next line says, good to brilliant clarity. There's no way. There is no way that is you can pass it off as good. And I'm not even gonna blame the camera for what you see. It's Maybe the camera's making it worse, but it's bad. And I know where things went sideways. I knew it the second I reviewed the recipe. 12% of white wheat for any recipe is a lot. And that is, I'm almost positive that's where this is coming from. There might be some chill haze, maybe. I don't think at least is suspended in there too much, but maybe one of those two things, but definitely white, 12% of white wheat was way too much. Not sure where I went wrong on those calculations. It should have been for what it's to do for this beer. It should have been 5% or under, like maybe four, uh, maybe even two. But 
despite that, we should still get some characteristics of our Bishop Golden Ale out of this one way or another. So let's take a look at what we're expecting. For aroma, it says hop aroma is moderately low to moderately high and can use a variety of hops, floral, herbal, or earthy English hops. A citrus, a citrusy American hops are most common. Frequently, a single hop varietal is showcased, and that is what I did with this. I did the first first gold hop as a showcase, as they're describing. Little to no malt aroma, no caramel, medium to low, low fruity aroma from the hops rather than the esters, and little to no acid also. Let's see where we're at with aroma on this. And I get absolutely no malt aroma, which stands a reason from the color, even though it's cloudy. I do get a little bit of somewhere in the spectrum between orange and grapefruit on the aroma and kind of that sting of a citrus. So I am getting a little bit of a hop aroma. I'm not getting anything fruit-wise from a yeast ester, I would expect. So I think we're in, we're starting to get towards the ballpark. We're in a parking lot. Let's say that. So flavor, medium to medium high bitterness. Hop flavor is moderate to moderately high of any hop variety, although citrus flavors are increasingly common. Medium low to low malt character, Generally bready with perhaps a little biscuity flavor. Caramel flavors are typically typically absent. Little to no diacetyl, hot bitterness flavor should be prominent. Moderately low to low esters. Medium dry to dry finish. Bitterness increases with alcohol level, but is always balanced. That's a lot of things to try to get here. But what I'm reading out of it is we should, there should be, it should taste like a beer on the malt side, but there should be a distinct top presence, but again, not sounding like it should be in the pale ale to IPA range. So let's find out. First thing I can say is that the, that underlying bitterness is drowning out the entire malt flavor. There's not a single sweet in this. I had just posted the, my strong bitter recipe and video um, a week ago from this and that, and there were some sweet characters and some caramel and crystal characters. Obviously, just by looking at this, you know you're not going to get that, and I don't. Now, as far as the hops, I'm not sure what I'm getting here. I am struggling to get any distinct hops. This, here's what's weird. It's definitely hop and bitter forward. The malt, there is a biscuity taste to it. It's actually quite nice um and it's over the palate and tongue and in the finish it's what i wish the, the um it's kind of what i wished for the um the strong bitter i did along with those caramel and sweet notes so i'm getting i'm getting the malt character but predominantly the flavor is bitter but and there is a hop forwardness to it but i can't distinguish what hop it is but i might have an idea eh, let me try again because it's i, I kind of i know i'm going to change this recipe because i got to get rid of that that haze I guess earthy is the closest thing to a hop character I get because it's going along with the malt character that is there. Um, it's more of a uh, kind of a, the the plant based plant based flavor. That's such a bizarre thing to say. I don't know what I don't know how I'm trying to describe it. Kind of like a green leafy flavor without being something specific. It's not. Uh, it's not a spinach. It's not a kale. It's not a, it's actually, actually, wait, maybe I take it back. It might be more of a kale, um, with the bitterness in there. So maybe that earthy flavor is coming through. Now I know first gold is supposed to be more of a citrus forward, but I'm not getting any of that taste. I got some of the aroma, but the taste, and it might be due to the fact that my grist is not right on this, but let me try it again. Yeah, I'm not getting the citrus flavor, but it's definitely, there's a, the bitter taste, and I don't mean like dark chocolate bitter, it's 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 drowning out the malt flavor, that malt character that I describe is more subtle, I just, I love, right there's the distinction of how much, too much white weed is in there by the lacing on that glass. So, without belaboring this video too long, 
I messed up. I mean, I'm going to post these videos, warts and all. It's not the first time I messed up, and it won't be the last time. The white wheat kind of ruined the beer. I don't know that it's affecting the hops. The hops might be a bad choice. When I do this again, I was going to say if I do this again. When I do this again, I'm going to stick with my base malts. I'm going to use the Maris Otter and the Pale Ale mix. And I'll still put, I might not do white wheat. I might do carapils to put the body in the, and help the head retention this time around. But I don't think First Gold was my preferred choice of flavor profile for this beer. I think even with, if even if everything else was okay with this, the First Gold is not what I want from what I see in this beer. I think I'd try something more along the lines of maybe Jester or Godi uh, Godiva Hops. Something British for sure. I'd, I want to do that. Uh, but it's not going to be this recipe. So... Part of studying styles is knowing what not to do. And you just got a very lengthy showcase on what not to do. There's some good stuff about this beer. I will say this. Let me say this. Process-wise, there's nothing wrong. I mean, there's no off. There, there are zero off flavors in this. And it's actually a very drinkable and quaffable beer. I think it comes in like 4.5%. But for style, it's, it's not wrong. It's just going to be... I might just rebrand this as some kind of wheat beer and maybe share it with a couple of people and see what they say. If they give them the idea that it's something other than it's supposed to be, it might actually be more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More, uh, it might get some better feedback. In fact, <laughs> if I, if, if competition season, what isn't what it was right now, we're just obviously coming off 2020. So competitions are, very limited as far as the amount of entries you can enter and the amount of overall beers. If if we were pre-COVID and I was in a competition where you had unlim unlimited entries, I would enter this as some kind of wheat beer to see what people would think. Unfortunately, we're very limited on what we can enter this year, so I'm not going to waste the entry and a potential win of any kind on a beer that uh, I'm guessing at what the style might be perceived as. But in any other year from 2019 and before I would do that, but I will finish this glass and I'll finish that the rest of that one gallon keg and I'll probably enjoy it. And I might have some other ideas of what to do and more ideas of what not to do along the way. It's very drinkable. It's not a British gold nail. At least I don't think so. Certainly not by appearance. I would get zero on appearance. I don't know. You can give a zero on a test. So I'd get a one. At worst, probably. I'm not going to chance it. I'll just enjoy this beer. So even though this was a bust, I hope you enjoyed bits and pieces of this video. And I will certainly thank you for hanging in there to the point that we're at now and say I'll be back with another video, hopefully a better success. But until then, I let me say again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in that next episode.